Hello everyone, this is Huck. Welcome to ICOS 2022. So this is tutorial number 14, Adversarial Robustness and Reprogramming for Speech and Language Processing, Challenge and New Opportunities. So th this is the section two of, of this tutorial. The first part uh, is introduced by Dr. Ping Yu Chen from IBM Research. And the second part introduced uh, will be presented by me, myself, uh, Huck from Georgia Tech. So in the second section, we are introduced how we can handle in pre trained model with input transformation. And this transformation is similar to the adversary noise, which is trainable. So it's, it's one new, uh, uh, brand new area in the adversarial learning community because this ensures some similarity. All right, so before we go into those uh, fancy nouns, right, reprogramming, pumping, let's think about uh, saying we have a pre-trained model, large-scale pre-trained model, whether it's image pre-trained like VIT, uh, speed pre-trained like way to better two autoregressive model, or a uh, large-scale language model like the uh, GPT-3. Mostly, uh, when we're trying to tune this model, it'll take a lot of resource. But pretty recently, uh, saying the pre model is a big ice bug, but saying we freeze or most of the parameters that are frozen is not trainable. But mm -hmm. if we only tune a part of this uh, model, the whole model can be still be really powerful and, and used in different domain, different tasks, even out of its original training data. So in this tutorial, we'll look at two techniques. One is reprogramming by using some input transformation. You can think of the water uh, put over is some parameter. We use this parameter uh, to fake this model for uh, domain adaptation and do a label mapping. But these things is uh, based on a technique called the reprogramming. Another thing is, also really popular since last year called the pumping. So we designed some mechanism to feed this token, to have the hard mapping, soft mapping, uh, hard pumping, uh, soft pumping, and we can still use this pressure model. So in this talk, we'll introduce some similarity between adversarial, that means the model reprogramming uh, compared to the classic adversarial learning technique. And then we'll introduce the theoretical foundation and how we can interpret this uh, progress, saying we have this input transformation and a large pressure model. And finally, there will be some recent uh, review, like we'll review some paper from the first paper in 2019 to uh, earlier this year. That means we still focus this uh, parameter as an input transformation, or you can think of this kind of input noise, but which is trainable that empower this uh, trend for learning or the meditation progress. So, okay, what is model reprogramming? Considering we have the input noise or trend for learning, ensure that it is. But if we want to have a model reprogramming, we need two things. One thing is we design some trainable uh, perturbation. Trainable means uh, by each iteration, we'll update those parameters on the perturbation and gradually target on the loss function. Uh, and, and then we can design our uh, training or to, to attend our training objective. That means the perturbation uh, can be used gradient to update. And then as we saying at the beginning, so we have a frozen pre-trained model. Most of the parameters are freeze. For example, uh, Inception 3, which is a classic computer vision based model for uh, classification, saying we have an Inception model by uh, training on the ImageNet dataset. We call it Inception version 3 ImageNet model. ImageNet is the source data. But now our goal is to refunction this ImageNet pre model for means classify for means classification. 
that makes image nets they are pictures like really large like uh, in different so resolution but they are larger than the handwritten digit in the mix data set and the label between image net and means they are definitely different like one two three and a thousand classes but the idea then become we have a uh, our like target data like uh, seven in the mix data and then we have a trainable perturbation as a patches around these inputs. The, the adversarial perturbation is trying to expand this input as the same shape with the image net source data. That means if we coming from a model perspective, this uh, target like input and this trainable uh, information together well, let the model think of is one of its source data. Since the source model uh, is trained, well trained, they have really robust decision boundary, and then, then they can uh, have a good prediction with lower approximation error, and then they associate uh, this iterative updating, and then finally use the label mapping to map, for example, doc cat to seven two, and finally we can. Uh, make this uh, reformulating from a pre-trained model. So this progress called model reprogramming. Some people call it adversary reprogramming because the noise is similar. But if we're coming from a statistical per perspective, these things does not associate with the min-max optimization progress. So it's not really adversarial uh, doing this uh, uh, training. All right. So in this one hour tutorial. So first we'll introduce some background of neural model reprogramming. And we all introduce one uh, advanced case study on refunction speech model for time series classification and refunction English model for the other language uh, processing. For example, English to Litovanian, to Arabic, to Chinese, to Mandarin. That's the first part of the talk. And the second part, we'll introduce our recent finding as a theoretical justification on how this reprogramming work by this latent-based alignment. So with these things, well, coming from an optimal transport perspective. And finally, uh, since there's some discussion between neural reprogramming from this noise and input pumping, so I'll introduce some finding uh, from, from different applications like reprogramming image model for task classification, different speech classification, computer vision like the general image to medical image, and some recent finding uh, on this input pumping uh, from different research group earlier this year. Finally, we'll be question and answer. Uh, we'll be online and feel free to have any questions. All right, so let's look at the first part background of neural model reprogramming. So before we get into the detail, let's recall our motivation is how do we empower a large representation model with shallow data? So in most of the cases, we say in deep learning work well with large data because large data can form a really good high statistical hypothesis in latent space, and then the model will not get overfitted but once we have a really large model, but we want to tune in on the on the on a small data set, the first thing is if this model is not pre-trained, but only have uh, saying 20 example want to train it from scratch is mostly impossible. That means shallow data is hard to train from scratch with the model. And they also have some difficulty to tune in with very few data points saying the original statistical hypothesis is based on a, a source domain, but once there is some shallow data, it's a little bit hard to formulate a, a new hypothesis with sparse information. That means if we have some acoustic signal, which is in the low resource, personalized, is a little bit hard, uh, even we have a really large uh, neural architecture or uh, original pre-trained model. 
So the idea from voice to theory programming uh, last year is trying to use a trainable noise for input transformation and fake any sequen sequential signal as speech input. So we have a pre-trained speech model. We fake any sensor data, ECG data as a speech input. And finally, we associate with the same label mapping technique. And interestingly, this technique attend new CFDR in 19 uh, UCR time series data set and three multilingual speech command include Arabic, Litovanian, and uh, Mandarin. So let's look at how we can do this reprogramming and how these things happen. Say we have a pre trained model and only few training samples. So here is some samples. We have the red circle and blue triangle. We're trying to classify those kind of label. And once we have a pre-trained decision boundary without uh, tuning this decision boundary, they can already have some power to classify these two kind of pattern. But once we tune this decision boundary, they can form well, even they have few samples, and then we have a new uh, decision boundary. But the thing is, as we discussed, because the data are too sparse, it's, it don't have enough information to uh, reconstruct a, a, a robust new uh, decision boundary, because once there is an outlier, or even just around its original dis distribution, is easy to make the model have misclassified. That means it's hard to find to a large prediction model with few target domain samples. Due to the small scale of the training data, domain mismatching, like from one domain, other domain, the output label that difference. And for most of the neural network model, since we have this non-linearity from the activation, so the model is without uh, the property uh, from the smoothness. But the problem in the real world cases saying we have an ASR on device or a speaker classification or a language recognition, the new task data often outliers sampling from a target domain. they always new data. So it will be hard to suppose we can collect sufficient data and just tune our preacher model or uh, train from scratch a large model uh, each time. And the parameters and the model capacity are always issues. So the representation power of the picture model is good. You know, really low approximation error, and we can have some autoregressive feature restriction. But could we also use the established decision boundary from Pritchens? That means saying we have really good source decision model, like Pritchens VGG-ish with really low approximation error, and we have the class A can be human sound, class B can be dog sound, class C can be uh, bird singing, class D can be kitchen sound. Because those data, they are coming from a sufficient domain. So data sufficient domain, so we can use those large data to construct a good decision boundary. But this time we don't we don't try to modify this decision boundary. We're trying to fruit freeze this, this decision boundary for uh, our application. Like we directly use the uh, uh, audio set VGH pre trend for uh, mosquito classification, mosquito sound classification. But like, you know, the, the audio set and the mosquito sound uh, are not quite similar, right? So we have a mismatching domain and the mosquito sound can be, you know, really few label and the audio set. So they have, we have a lot of labels. The label number is even not matching. So how could we do if we don't want to modify the established decision boundary, but we still want to do the transfer learning from the project model? 
saying we have the target data with uh, from so there can be a the red circle and the blue triangle again or you, from acoustic perspective you can think of this sound uh, uh, low resource sound data like mosquito sound as I say can we just do some input transformation like since we freeze this model but we can transport and trans make some transformation on this data to let the model think about this data is almost likely to be its source data. For example, by adding some noise, can we let the model think about our target data one could map into the source data one and we're properly locate in the uh, it class A and the target data two, like to be the source uh, data class two and properly locate in the class B. In this sense, since we have a really low approximation error, we can make a good prediction and final save is just mapping the class A and class B back to the, our target data classes again. So that means we can design some mechanism uh, like the reprogramming to, to design this trainable information. So uh, in the voice to series reprogramming, so we have a case study for a speech, pretrained speech model for time series classification. Time series means a uh, different domain like the sensor data, ECG data, or like the food spectrogram, like we have sensing whether it is a good wine or not. So here have a semantic illustration of the proposed words of series. Saying we have a target signal like the ECG, but ECG mostly we have thousand sample points, but this time we want to let the ECG uh, look like a speech. So first step is at least we have to make it with 16K sample point, right? So the reprogramming layer, just trying to paddle some information around to make it as a, a 16,000 sample array uh, speech. Here is something we reprogram here trainable uh, input uh, parameter. And then we directly feed this reprogram input to a uh, pre-trained uh, acoustic model. So in this, in this uh, example, we use a Google speech command classifier, which have a 36 output prediction from up and down, and those kind of common speech commits. And then things the model will predict is original output, right? So these can be up, down, open, close, but we have to mapping this source output to our target, like the abnormal or the normal ECG. So this progress associated with the hard mapping, like, so in this case, we can reformatting a, a pre accuracy model for different domain, like the time series and the reprogram happens here. So here is some uh, overview about this voice of Siri reprogramming. It's the, first, it's the first method in power reprogramming for time series tasks with really few trainable parameter. Uh, for example, we only have 16K trainable parameter from a pre trained speech model. So you can think of these things. If these things is on device, we don't suffer the, the issues about large uh, model tuning. And tasks on the standard UCR time series classification benchmark, uh, these masses uh, attend uh, good performance, uh, improve the average accuracy by 1.3%. And most importantly, uh, we developed the first surgical risk analysis, which can be used to assess the performance of the reprogramming, trying to know what happened in the latent domain. So in the in the, in the first part of the talk, we are introduced this mechanism and the theoretical analysis will be uh, incorporated in the second part of this uh, tutorial. I want to say this reprogramming is uh, amazing even with the uh, pre-trained speech model. You know, like, like uh, we're doing speech processing, we often have a lot of label data, but for this time series or a lot of industrial application, usually data are sparse. So uh, the, the UCR time series classification data set, 
they have the coffee ECG or Han or the car sensor or the motion data, strawberry, good strawberry or uh, unmature strawberry or mature strawberry, wafer information and wine information. And the voice to theory uh, tries to reprogram a, a 20 million parameters attention RN can achieve or outperform state of the art in 19 of the 30 data set. So I want to say uh, this comparison is actually not fair for reprogramming because some of the state of the art they are trying to use the tree ensemble and trying to do the data augmentation. But the thing we're doing here is like this. We directly uh, trying to have a metric one around this uh, pre-trained model. So if we look into detail how this uh, computation block up, uh, about how we design the reprogramming, we have four parts. The first part is some trainable um, uh, layers. And like we use this uh, parameter to update our uh, model and gradually to lower down the loss. Uh, this model well controlled by the gradient uh, descent. And then we have the pre-trained model, uh, which will be frozen. And because uh, we want to have make this model end-to-end -end training, so we uh, do the acoustic uh, feature instruction uh, uh, online for each time they will pick out this male spectrogram. So we have to have a differentiable audio layer. And then finally, we have the label mapping from to our output. So each time, if they have a short sequence of signal, so they are go over this reprogramming layer and then to expand it, this signal with 16K uh, samples and then go into the uh, acoustic layer to have the male spectrogram. And then we uh, feed this male spectrogram to uh, the pressure model and finally make the prediction. And we compare with, with one uh, variant, variant about this uh, self-attention based uh, RNN is we add a unit on that but we compare those two kind of preacher model with a larger model and benchmark model for time series classification in the voice to series paper. And we have the, our implementation and our layer open source uh, as an open source and you can find out here. So interestingly, when you look at uh, the visualization about reprogramming, so we uh, give example of the words data the worst data is we have some target uh, sensor data like here. You can look, you can see this black signal. So we uh, like paddling this signal three times, one, two, three. And then we have the reprogram uh, parameter over here. So you can see this thing is like a, a diverse or example on the waveform. Uh, but here is something trainable. Here is the our original target data. But if we directly look at the attention hat about reprogramming input, even the model is not directly, the forger model is not directly trained on our target time series. The attention hat still look at some, look, look at this like, uh, this target time series signal. Like you can see the hat have something here. But gradually we updating this noise and then feed this sample to, to our future model and for the time series classification. And if we look deeper on how each layer uh, interpreter or how each layer recognize this reprogramming uh, information, reprogram information, we should look at the male spectrogram, which is the power and the frequency over the time. So we can find out here is the target signal, have a higher intensity, and here is something, so the noise we just reprogrammed it. There's something we reprogrammed that. And if we use cluster division mapping, saying uh, if the model makes the right uh, prediction, where and what's part of the picture the model is rely on to make this prediction, for well, the first convolution layer, interestingly, they look at our target signal, which is the sensor data, time series data here. For our, of our second convolution layer, they look at the noise. So it's something 
quite unique as a behavior. Another example I want to show up is, uh, is reprogram for multilingual speech processing. So now for the Google speech commands, uh, they are English, but can we re still use the reprogramming techniques to uh, make an English model for uh, different uh, language and to recognize command in different language? So I hope you can hear the voice, all right? So here's the original sound. No. Nah. So it's not in Litovenian. So which means no. So these these things as an input. And then we have the trainable noise by uh, a reprogramming layer. So now you can look at uh, the rest signal over here. They are quite small, but we reprogram this Litovenian as no in English. No. Nah. So you can see something behind, but like adversary noise is not really obvious. But after this noise just add down on this little Vanian uh, speech, the picture model will recognize these things will be one of its original label. So they'll predict nine or no. And then we, will, we can do uh, a technique called a many to one label mapping proposing in uh, our ICML paper and then we can make the final prediction of our target, which is not here. So not just little Vanian, can we also do these things in the other language like Mandarin? Let's listen to this little Vanya again. So this is Vanyas, which is one in English. Vianas. And then we program one. Vianas. Right, so it's something behind, but it's not really obvious again. E. So this is the uh, Mandarin speech command for uh, those people who could not uh, uh, generate their sound properly. So it's uh, E, which is means one in, uh, in English. E. And then we have the reprogram uh, Mandarin. E. So in uh, this following work, we also find out if we do some uh, label mapping based on the cosine similarity in the latent domain, we can find out some target class uh, much closer in our source class. For example, for follow will be much similar to one uh, little venue and now, and go down will be similar to Motaba in Arabic. So uh, we can do this alignment by calculating cosine similarity uh, before, uh, before the final prediction. So in our original paper, we just try the frequency-based mapping or the random mapping that are good enough, but we further find out by this similarity-based mapping, the performance will be even better. And this uh, like technique beat weak to vector two pretrend in Litovanian, Mandarin, and Arabic speech. I want to highlight uh, by reprogramming can be also combined with fine tuning. So when we look at the baseline and the vector, vector uh, technique here, the reprogramming and fine tuning on a small acoustic model, which only have 28 million uh, parameter can be outperformed with the official vector vector two. And uh, we can also find out by adding data augmentation, the the performance become even better. So, so this is the result for little Vanian speech command classification for three class, 10 class. And we find out by adding, uh, you know, the special gram uh, like corping, the augmentation, uh, data augmentation can further have a relative improvement around 10% compared uh, to the uh, like fine tuning and the baseline, which attain a new set of the art uh, if you're interested, you can look at uh, our code release here. All right, so here is some um, uh, summary and the takeaways of, of the first part of this uh, tutorial. So model reprogramming provides a promising and new CLDR result on low resource time series and speech and like uh, multilingual speech data. So through a trainable input noise, Reprogramming requires least trainable parameter, for example, like 
uh, 16K, and we fine tune a small model, like which require least model parameter compared with a large model. And uh, definitely we should be better uh, in terms of the model parameter, we should be require, require least compared with training from scratch. And interestingly, from the neural silence analysis, these things demonstrate that for even the frozen pre-trained model can also learn uh, to recognize the target signal, for example, low resource data. All right, so, and then you might ask like, how these things happen? Or we just have a really good pre-trained model or the model, the prediction power of the model is even better than we thought. And how it happened by this input transformation and how this prediction gradually uh, can be trained with this input transformation. So we come to the second part of the talk, a theoretical justification of neural reprogramming. So before going to the detail, so let's have some uh, 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 warm up of optimal transport. So saying we have two sources of probability like the Px and Q, Y from different domain. So the optimal transport is trying to have this point wise uh, uh, like distance uh, from one domain to other domains. That means we can measure this distance by uh, like uh, LP norm, uh, Wassenstein distance. So if we suppose this uh, reprogramming or pumping we are later mentioned joins to help the model uh, from our target data align back to some distribution in the source domain. So then like we can still use the, uh, make the you good, make, make a good use of this uh, decision boundary. And that means uh, we can use some idea for optimal transport to estimate the upper bound about uh, the model. So before we go into the detail, so let's have some mathematical notation. So we have our source domain, our target domain, the space of the source data samples and the space of our target because they, they can be mismatched. And the prediction space, because we have the label mapping. So the data, the numbers of a label uh, could, should not be always the same. And then we have a one hard encoded label from uh, one domain and we have number of the source label. For example, if the source model is pre-trained on image net, they have a thousand labels. All right, so we have uh, our source map function in the our neural network and the logic representation, which is the latent representation. And the risk function is like how we, how properly the, the classifier behave. And the population risk based on the classifier saying, if we sample all the population from the uh, from a good up data and how the risk can be major is we can define these things uh, from our classifier. And then finally is the delta and the theta, which is the additive input transformation on the target data, which is uh, this delta is parameterized by theta, which can be updated by gradient. So we have some hypothesis uh, is a, and due to the con time constraint, I will skip this part. But you can think of saying we have, uh, the most important thing is saying we have a domain independent drawing from the source and target data. And we have two probability density function of the source and target data uh, distribution over our source and target. The joint probability density is the product of layer margin. So we can write on this format. That means we want to measure the risk uh, after we do the reprogramming. Does the risk become lower or higher? And can we have an upper bound about this probability risk? Try to describe the power of, of a reprogram, rec reprogrammable uh, classifier. But by learning this, uh, we have to uh, compute their joint probability density function. So now we have our lemma one. So given a K-way neural network classifier, and we have two probability major of the logistic representation, which is the original uh, probability major 
and the public major after this perturbation. And these things are coming from the logic representation from the latent domain from, uh, from two distribution. You can think of one is the original data, one is perturbed data. As a soon independent drawing from X and X1, we have our drawing uh, uh, probability density function here. And then we can have our uh, upper bound based on uh, the Wassenstein uh, one dimension Wassenstein distance between these two probability uh, measurement. Because we have a closed form solution, so the time series they are closed form, but for image we can convert to one dimension to access this closed form Wassenstein measurement. So uh, this the 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 risk about this uh, the 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 original classifier and the reprogram classifier will be bounded by two uh, uh, square root k over uh, the Wassenstein distance, one dimension Wassenstein distance measured by uh, these uh, probability measures. So here is the upper bound about our model. But by having this uh, uh, sine Wassenstein measurement, uh, how we can further define the power of our prediction model. So we can think of, uh, the reprogramming is trying to do some input transformation and to align this feature in the latent domain. Saying uh, we have a delta denotes the learned added input transformation for reprogramming, the population risk for target task of our reprogramming, uh, k way source neuron classifier is a pressure model like the image net or audio set per chain. Uh, is upper bounded by two things. The first thing is the source risk. That means the approximation error is how good is your original uh, classifier. For example, you can you just use uh, convolution or dense layer to, uh, to pre-train a model, but in this case, the approximation error will be larger than a really large pre-train. So that's the source risk is how the original, how, how good is the model um, uh, classify or predict its original domain. And then the second will be the representation alignment loss through the reprogramming. So it's like we gradually align these things back to this original source data and which can be measured by uh, Wassenstein system by mapping these things to some distribution. But this result, uh, which uh, published in ICML 2021 is the first theoretical analysis and suggests that reprogramming can perform better, which have a lower risk when a source model have a lower source risk, that means we have a better source model and then smaller representation loss, which we can further measure by the uh, side, side Wassenstein uh, distance. And we pick out one dimension because we can mapping these things in one dimension and to have the closed form solution. Interestingly, when we try to justify which future model or which data set or which source data can be properly uh, uh, reprogrammable, we can use this measurement. And to measure is source and to measure is loss, to measure is distance as alignment. And we find out like not just this data set, but in most of the data set, uh, when the, in all data set, I mean, when, in, in all data that we evaluate. So when the accuracy uh, increase, the loss is definitely decreased. And the side Watson line distance, after we project this like uh, this, our target data to a Gaussian and trying to do this distance measure. And the side one sign distance also decrease when the loss is decreased. So we, pop, we calculate its p-value, although it's not, uh, decrease in uh, synchronized, but originally, uh, finally, these things will be largely uh, decreased uh, as an alignment. Another perspective is trying to see what happened in the latent space. So when we visualize uh, a two model, like fine-tuned transfer learning and the V2S reprogramming, if the model have a similar uh, classification uh, performance, like, this is a uh, model performed on the strawberry, like on mature strawberry or the mature strawberry. Even these things have a similar classification accuracy, 
the reprogramming, which means by adding this input uh, transformation, could actually uh, align these things uh, like uh, larger to have a larger margin, even we don't use these things as a constraint. And also these things happen for ECG, fine tuning, same performance, but reprogramming have a quite interesting metaphor as a latent space alignment. So here is a short summary. So based on our uh, theory and the justification, neural model reprogramming could be interpreted as one progress for latent space alignment with the reprogram model. So I believe there is uh, more thing to discover, but it is uh, it is an interesting first step to trying to interpret Herb this input transformation with pressure model. All right, so here it comes to the third part of this tutorial, uh, more application on reprogramming and input pumping. Originally, uh, I was, uh, when we submit this proposal for this tutorial, we only look at the reprogramming, but since a recent four or five years, there's a lot of study on input pumping. So we are also discuss some input pumping and you know like these things share some similarity because we have a frozen pre-trend and uh, how where where is the similarity and dissimilarity and how these things perform what we discuss in the third part. All right, so let's have the model reprogramming overview. So if you miss the first two parts, you can think reprogramming like this. So we have a input transformation layer from the source domain. The source domain uh, offer an in a uh, sufficient domain like human speech uh, for speech processing, uh, language data, autoregressive uh, language model, and computer vision. And we have our target domain. Usually they are a limit domain like time series from the sensor data, molecular classification, or biomedical measurement. So we want to uh, make our prediction on target domain become better by reformulating this source domain with uh, uh, input transformation and we call this progress reprogramming. And another different reprogramming uh, compared with fine tuning based uh, transfer learning. So we associate with the output mapping uh, technique. We mapping some uh, label from the source domain to its target. So here is some uh, a summary uh, from a paper, survey paper, reprogram, new model reprogramming, resource efficient closed domain machine learning uh, by Data Ping Chen. So uh, these things introduce uh, some source domain like general image and the uh, uh, source model and uh, the target domain and the highlight. Actually, so the, the iClear uh, 2019 is the first work. And then we people find out we can also use for NLP task and people find out we can use it for medical uh, classification and also for biomedical classification, for molecular classification. And finally, uh, in 20, uh, 2020 and 2022, people find out we can also reprogram a, a generator model, generating model like GAN. And our work for speech uh, processing and time series processing and very recently, people find out we can also reprogram a VIT uh, as a, a vision-based autoregressive model for DNA classification. So uh, we all go over this paper and highlight some uh, new finding over time. So after the first uh, iClear paper, so there is a, a interesting paper called uh, uh, Reprogramming for Task Classification. So the idea is we add some uh, parameter here and then just to uh, reprogram the RN. So let's suppose two cases because at that time people think reprogramming is one of the attack to make the model uh, uh, perform different function, but in the good way. So let's think about the white box uh, attack. White box attack is suppose we can access the model. So like, uh, we have the adversarial uh, program policy now where to update this uh, uh, theta and distribution over this value is they use the reinforcing learning based agent to update this information. 
And then they have the generative gumbo distribution, which is right now popular for autoregressive model. And then another case is, is like they think the model is a black box and then they use a reinforce uh, algorithm to update this black box model. For example, these things can be API or something else. And they find out the uh, performance is interesting and functionable for NLP based task. And the second paper is uh, black box reprogramming for Im medical image, which published in uh, ICML 2020. They, uh, in, in their work, they just have an access limit black box machine learning model, but different than uh, use uh, reinforced learning based uh, me mechanism, they use more efficient uh, based black box optimization. And in their work, they showed up, they can attend new LDR for medical image classification by refunction of image net. And also they can refunction uh, uh, image API. For example, they can refunction a, a a traffic image classifier to a medical image classifier, which is quite interesting because in this case, we will not associate with some uh, parameter uh, leakage issues. Right now it's really popular due to the GDPR requirement. So here is people do the reprogramming and use uh, approximate gradient to update the model. Another paper I want to talk about is just uh, published this year called a course model reprogramming with a uh, vision transformer. So they have the sequence like the auto regressive model and they have the embedding lookup. After this lookup, we'll have uh, the patches like uh, from the sequence, like the genomic sequence or task sequence. And then uh, for each uh, embedding lookup, we have these patches and we add these patches on our original input. So for this input, they can have different patches, like that's, which means can have different noise associated with the input. And then you can think these things are very similar to, to pumping because we are not directly uh, modify this input because it's a little bit hard to, to define how we can modify this text sequence. But by a modified uh, autoregressive model like VIT, we can finally uh, use these things uh, for prediction and to have a prediction uh, for different domain. In their work, they show that uh, even the image model can be reprogrammed for DNA classification. And then do some analysis like the classic or the versal robustness, we have the bounded L infinity norm or L1 uh, infinity norm uh, constraint for the VIT and the ResNet. You can find out the the, the texture about this reprogram image that are quite different. Another paper I want to highlight, uh, I just know this paper pretty recently. So they called it Reprogram Guns for Input Noise Design, which published in ECIT ML 2020. Sorry, there's a typo. So saying we have a source uh, latent model uh, from the source, uh, can we just refunction the uh, image net uh, classifier for fashion means uh, uh, image net generator to to other generation. That means maybe the image net learn a larger uh, uh, synthetic space, but we can by by feeding some uh, specific input, we can just urge the model to generate part of the this subspace. That means uh, these times they have a frozen uh, generator like the frozen language model or speech model we, uh, we looked before, but they have a transformation to transfer this input to a, uh, to a, a certain vector. So it, we, it's now directly generated vector. It's like we train this uh, generator or this uh, nonlinear mapping. And then we feed up uh, uh, our target uh, sequence uh, to uh, vectors, latent vector to the generator. And then we, as a classic GAN, GAN training, we have the uh, discriminator model. And finally, we can uh, make the image net model to do some other uh, task. And more recently, people find out uh, we can improve the input reprogramming uh, to, to add an unconditional GAN to condition on certain input. That means we have an un unconditioned generator and some label data, and, and we can use this algorithm to 
lack a uh, conditional generator to generate some data we want it to, to generate. So the idea is similar to GAN reprogramming. So we have a, a frozen prediction model, which is a generator, which is a GAN in these cases. So we have our embedding from our output label. We concat uh, the vector with our, our label as a new vector. And then we have this mapping to generate some latent vector to the generator. And then finally, we can use this discriminator to train a GAN. Interestingly, so they compared to some real distribution of class one to three, they can like they can ask an un unsupervised gun to 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 generate uh, both zero one to three uh, in a in a supervised uh, or a condition perspective, and we can also uh, use a face gun to generate uh, the the people wearing glasses or only uh, gender equal to male. So. After we look at a lot of uh, reprogramming application, uh, people will think like, okay, this reprogramming is a little bit similar to hot pumping. That means uh, without uh, a decoder hat, or should we call it hard pumping or input reprogramming? I want to talk about one paper just published uh, at ACL last year. They called it WAP, worst level adversarial reprogramming. So let's think about, uh, we have this mass prediction and we can de design some uh, input transformation or some embedding, trainable embedding before we fit into our picture model. In their paper, they think these things, uh, which is called pumping, uh, hard pumping in NLP domain is uh, a case of reprogramming. So this is the figure one in their paper. So they, like, they think these things uh, world level reprogramming and the thing they're doing is so so saying they have a transformer encoder, so they have some trainable uh, embedding, which is a green color, something green color over here. And the LM is without a decoder, and finally they can do some uh, like the the trainable embedding to uh, to reprogram the transformer to other uh, application. So meanwhile, uh, when you think of, okay, since the uh, reprogramming and neuron pumping do the same things, uh, how is the neuron pumping uh, work recently for speech processing? I want to highlight uh, two paper from speech community very recently. The first paper is an explanation of pumping tuning on generative broken language model for speech processing. So let's think of by uh, using pumping on a, a, a language model, like saying first uh, a row away from a go over some uh, self supervised speech model and quantizer, and we have this unit, like the token unit to feed on into a universal language model. We can do the pumping uh, to depend on each task. For example, we can condition on uh, intent classification, keywords building, uh, slot filling, or ASR. And here is some of discrete discrete units, and finally will be the output. And I find out uh, by palm tuning on a generated spoken language model, they can let this spoken language model to do tasks like detection, SLU, recognition, or something else. And they compare different uh, palm tuning technique and the performance are quite promising by prompt tuning with a, a frozen speech model. But you can think up the, the things compared with the voice to Siri is voice to Siri don't use the auto regressive model, but here they have different uh, tokens. Like we know we have a pump tokens. So these things that the motivation are similar by uh, using an input transformation but the architecture on the auto regressive part uh, will be uh, or it's not identically the same. Another paper uh, also pretty recently called the Tours of Future of Spoken Language Understanding with Frozen Language Model. The same thing is they have a, a inference pay uh, of a wave pump during the training. So they have a transcription and a question of the pump and the answer, for example, to catch a, a glimpse of a expected trend. 
So they will have the auto regressive language model to recover these things from the tags and the audio. Uh, row waveforming. Uh, after this training, uh, pre training space, the inference uh, will inference uh, some target tasks uh, by the pump. For example, if they want this model to recognize whether uh, uh, where's a noun about this uh, sentence should be a man in this case, so they can reprogram uh, these things uh, for future SLU. Interestingly, uh, compared uh, with uh, different uh, data sets, they find out we can, they can do the question answering and performance is way better than the naive uh, approaches. And they also compare the sensitivity uh, from different shots. So sometimes we can find out uh, the first few shots uh, perform already very good on some data sets. Finally, there is another paper uh, from the computer vision. So if we look at the reprogramming, we have the, the input transform transformation, and then we use this transformation for a classifier for the prediction. And people from pumping, if we think of, we have an autoregressive model, can we also pumping in the pixel level? They are actually pretty much the same with adversarial reprogramming. So this is a pretty recent paper uh, publishing on Kive. So they have an input pump, go over this uh, image, and then uh, they can use this pixel-based transformation to uh, pump uh, a pre-trained uh, image model or a joint embedding model. So by their definition, so uh, when we had pre-training, so we have our prediction and fine-tuning, just uh, tune the model, the yellow color area is something uh, trainable. So we can uh, tune the model for uh, follower recognition. The linear problem is we add a linear layer, uh, which is uh, similar when we do the transform learning. But visual pumping is adding some uh, trainable input. It's very similar to the, it's, uh, it's actually very similar to the uh, reprogramming and the coded pump image and fit it in the picture model for prediction. So yeah, so we have some discussion uh, with the author and also also think of their share some similarity between your reprogramming but also want to highlight their contribution is also look at uh, if uh, and evaluate different scenario uh, of pumping or input pumping or new reprogramming for other tasks for example we can uh, input pump pumping a, a image for object detection to classify the sense or trying to uh, have the other tasks in computer vision. So uh, that means like uh, the, the, the input transformation from is, uh, the iClear paper can be further use it for different tasks. That means not just data, the task can be also feasible share with the same computation diagram from, from the input pumping, whatever you call it. And then the pump size is uh, really uh, uh, critical. Like for, for, for example, if you directly paddling around this area, the pump size, the larger pump size will not always uh, uh, produce a better accuracy. For example, a fixed pump or random pump will not be the paddling like people have been done on, on their paper and the original programming paper. But I also want to highlight like the same research group have a, a really good finding, consider the generative model as a data source, right? So now we have a trainable input as a data source for uh, latent domain adaptation. But in their iClear 2022 paper, they think of the trans, uh, generative model like GAN can be generate some uh, transformation on the input and we can further empower the learner to learn some embedding function for other tasks. So it's learning from the model and learning from the data. That means if we get some constructed data documentation, like seeing CL, uh, CIL, we can just to use the uh, generator to generate something from the data space to the representation space. That means the reprogram uh, information can be also generated from a generative model for the final adaptation. So, uh, this uh, cry promising area 
and share some similarity from both adversarial noise, uh, gone, adversarial learning. And finally, we can uh, use the adversarial noise to do some good things. So here's uh, the conclusion. So both model reprogramming and pumping could reformat pre-trained model for different tasks and data. And the power of pre-trained model could further advance in cost domain learning. For example, speech and biomedical data can bridge bridging these things together and image and genomic together. And finally, the connection between reprogramming and pumping could be much clearer because these things share the same motivation and some of the same computation background but I believe uh, I originally will converge together to make our pre-trained model become better with alignment. So another thing I want to uh, think about is not always the, the, the big model is, is not larger data, large model is all the thing we need. Uh, from, from a lot of survey from the reprogramming and pumping, reprogram a relative small model some, sometimes can uh, behave better than the large model. That means if you're in a small research group, you don't have a lot of computational resource, you can still do the reprogramming because the, the, they don't, they are not computation exclusively. They are not what to vector to or you need. So, but we can still reprogram what to vector to for different application, but there's another story. But I mean, there's other opportunity by using reprogramming uh, for low resource and and different domain application. I believe this is something exciting for both uh, speech and acoustic community. All right, so, so finally, I'll give uh, the acknowledgement to my collaborator, Dr. Ping Chen from IBM Research, Professor Sabato Marco from Co University of Anna, uh, Professor Utah from Academia Seneca, uh, Yunin from ByteDance, Professor Alec Leach from Georgia Tech, Yunin Tsai from Columbia, Professor Hong Yi Li from National Town University. I appreciate the discussion and some of the collaboration over this tutorial. And feel free, if you have any question, feel free to email me or uh, if you're in a Google, feel free to have some uh, collaboration. I'll be in Google this summer. So finally, there will be some reference and the slide. And I have a uh, so I made a collection about Austin neural model reprogramming and pumping. And here is the uh, fun cartoon we just see about. So you can find the title and the code uh, we just introduced over this tutorial. And feel free to access this, uh, uh, this website and we'll see you uh, in, the, in the tutorial QA session and hope you enjoy your ICAST 2022. Take care.